Welcome back to the last segment of Eastern Panhandle Talk today with Mike Hornby. Joined by Bill and Maria. Thank you for putting up with me for the last hour and a half. It's been good, Mike. You've done a great job. I think we, uh, we've had some good characters and good conversation. Uh, we move to our next guest, who is Jeff Brabant with the National Federation of Independent Business. Jeff, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thanks for having me. Uh, tell us a little bit about, um, I know you've, uh, you, you wrote an uh, editorial piece in the Washington Times, I believe. Um, what, what is the, the, the law that you're supporting or, or, or you're opposing? Sure. So, so the law is the Main Street Tax Certainty Act. And um, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll kind of back up and give you a yeah. little background of what the bill is, who NFIB is, and, and, and why this all came about. So the organization I work for, the National Federation of Independent Business, or NFIB for short, is the voice of small business in Washington and all 50 state capitals. So we're, we're a pretty unique organization in that it was actually started uh, back in the 40s by a, a disaffected small business owner who thought small business owners had no say in big policy debates because they couldn't afford, uh, they didn't have millions of dollars to pay for lobbyists. And so how do you define a small business, Jeff? What, what is the definition of a small business under your, um, your, your uh, uh, well, well, we have to, our rule is you have to be independently owned and operated. Um, our average member has about seven to eight employees. So we're, we're talking very small ones. They Excellent. vary in size quite a bit. Our average one's seven, eight employees. And the kind of the model is a, a whole bunch of small business owners band together. Uh, and for a nominal fee, uh, you know, less than $200 in some cases, you pay and you get lobbying in both federal and, and state locations exclusively on small business issues. That's the one unique thing about NFIB. And, and in some cases, they aren't that different than big business issues, but in many cases like this one, they're, they're very different. And um, if we kind of uh, rewind back to 2017, and that's when that, the last big piece of tax uh, reform was passed, that was the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act under um, President Trump and the Republican Congress. And one of the big pieces many people heard from that uh, was a lowering of the C-corporation rate from... 35 to 21%. I think most people know what the corporate tax rate is, right? Um, and lowering that was great. It made U.S. more competitive with a lot of countries overseas and made sure a lot of companies came back home. But the one thing that really flew under the radar that most people fundamentally, if you haven't started a small business, you may not understand is that most small businesses and most businesses in general don't pay to C-corp rate. They're what you call pass-through businesses. And what that means is that any business income just goes to your personal income taxes. It passes right through. So you're paying the regular individual income tax rate. And the individual income tax rate uh, back in 2017 was only changing the top rate from 39.6 to 37%. So if you're one of these pastors, which are over 90% of small businesses, over 80% of all small employers, uh, you're going to be looking at, you're looking at potentially 37% top rate when your corporate competitor was looking at 21, which is usually C-Corps tend to be much larger than pastors. So that was a real issue. So what Congress did is they came up with this new provision called this 20% deduction for pastor businesses. We have dubbed the small business deduction because it's over 90% of small businesses that are actually getting it, uh, that allows them to deduct their business income to get their effective rate a lot closer to that 21% that corporations are paying to keep these main street businesses uh, competitive with these larger corporations. So that was a big deal. That was a big win for small businesses. And I think we saw um, immediately after in that 2018, 2019 range, the small business economy took off. Um, unfortunately, uh, as with many things in Congress, these um, tax cuts expire at the end of 2025. So in less than a year and a half, we are looking at nine in 10 small businesses seeing a significant tax increase. And, that's, uh, and to put that in perspective, over 90% of small businesses represents over 30 million small businesses. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, and one of the things we're trying to do is just make sure that A, small businesses in West Virginia understand this, that, hey, if you're, if you're a small business, odds are you're one of these pass-through groups, you're a sole proprietor, you're an S corporation, you're a partnership, Understand that there's a number of tax hikes coming at the end of next year, and you know those might be averted. Congress might extend it; they might make it permanent. We'd love to see them. Uh, people support this Main Street Tax Certainty Act, 
that we are supporting, which would make this provision permanent. But Congress isn't going to do that unless you're a small business owner listening right now who hears this and picks up the phone and calls because they need to hear personal, individualized stories, right? They, they can hear from me, a lobbyist in Washington, and say, okay, here's just another lobbyist. But when they hear from a small business owner, the real story who says, hey, this tax increase has cost my business $30,000, and because of that, I can't give pay raises to my employees, or because of that, I can't you know open a new location like I hoped. That's what really connects with legislators. When they hear, hey, these are my small businesses in my district that are going to be hurting because of this, I really got to do something about this. Yeah. Good morning, Jeff. Uh, I, I was reading your editorial in the Times, Washington Times, and I got the impression there was a different thrust. You're talking about the tax cut tax rate now, but also is there a transparency or reporting issue as well that that is a, a real burden to the small businesses? Oh, of course. Uh, so there are no lack of uh, issues for small business owners right now, and this is probably the, the second biggest issue we've been talking about. Uh, and this deals with the Corporate Transparency Act. So uh, most people have probably never heard of this. This is another exclusively small business issue. So if you're a small business owner and uh, you have 20 or fewer employees and you have an LLC, which is the vast, vast, vast majority of small business owners and the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network estimates over 32 million of these folks, you're going to have to register with an organization called the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network by the end of the year or risk uh, up to two years in prison and $10,000 in fines. Um, and you might be saying, well, what is this? How did this come about? Why? Um, Congress tacked this onto a defense authorization bill several years ago without a vote in the Senate uh, or anything happening in the Senate, even a markup in the Senate. Uh, and it's going to require all these small business owners with the idea being this will stop uh, sophisticated money launderers from laundering money because those money launderers will now have to tell the government, uh, hey, I own this shell company. Um, NFIB is a little concerned for a number of reasons. A, we don't think uh, a money launderer um, who is using the banking system to launder money is going to honestly tell the government that they're doing it and, and report and get arrested. Um, and B, uh, you're going to ask 32 million business owners to um, become pen pals of the government. Uh, and I'll get into why you become pen pals in just a minute here. Uh, to do this, to potentially catch a criminal who will probably not slip up but might slip up, um, you basically have to prove to the government you're not a criminal is the whole point of this reporting. And it only affects small business owners, those with 20 or fewer employees. Um, so it's a real personal privacy concern. It's a real burdensome concern because you have to report anyone who's considered a beneficial owner. And the way beneficial owner is described is anyone with a 25% equity stake in your business, which that's pretty understandable, or anyone with substantial control of your business, which is very loosely defined. They even use an example that a, um, a head attorney for your business would have to file because they have control of your business. So let's think about it for a second. If you own a small restaurant, that means your general manager is going to have to report their information to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. And you have to give a copy of your driver's license. And if any of that information ever changes, you then have a few months to update your information for the life of the company. So if your driver's license expires, you, you, got, you got 60, 90 days to tell FinCEN. If you're um, address you provided changes. You got to tell FinCEN. And all these things, if you don't do it, you can go to jail for two years. Yeah. So this, this is a pretty, that's really flying under the radar. Yeah. It sounds like Big Brother's watching. Uh, but, and you mentioned a couple of examples of what you have to regist uh, uh, register. Uh, how onerous is the registration? Uh, besides driver's license, do you have to give your bank accounts? Do you have to give your credit card debts and the like? Is, are they included? <coughs> So your, your banks already have this information. Um, this, is, this is a long story, but if you go back to 2018, there was a regulation passed that required if you're a business and you open a bank account, you already have to give this information to your bank. 
Uh, basically, what happened here is the banks are trying to get out of that regulation, so they're trying to pass that regulation on to small business owners to do directly. Um, they may or may not get out of it, but uh, you don't have to report your bank information. Like I said, your banks already have this. You, you have to get a photocopy of your driver's license um, to uh, or every beneficial owner, and you have to get basic information about your business, like your business name um, and where it's located. And you also have to give your taxpayer identification number. Jeff, who do you uh, who do you actually have, give this to? Are you uploading it to a website, or yes. is it, it like where's that? Is it stored in a, a closet in my office, or yes. is it? Do I have to actually send it to the federal government? You have to go to uh, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network's website and upload it to their website. <laughs> but yeah, uh, on the surface. It's you can make a uh, it's it's onerous, but the, what you've listed so far is once a year fairly short submission, or if there happens to be a change in driver's license. But it, on the surface, it doesn't does not appear to me to be onerous. But I'm not a small business operator either, so. But tell me why I should be alarmed about this. You shouldn't have to prove I, I that you're. Uh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. A couple reasons. <laughs> only applies to businesses of 20 or fewer employees. Yeah, so th those who can least handle the reporting burden, those who don't have a compliance department to handle this will have to do it. Two is this isn't a one and done. If any of this information ever changes, if you get a new beneficial, let's say you're a restaurant, you get a new manager, you have uh, several months to update FinCEN for the life of your company, or you can go to prison for two years. The second one is the privacy concern. So this is all going to go into one massive database that uh, FinCEN operates that over 10,000 law enforcement officers have access to, as well as intelligence officials. So there are folks at the FBI. There are folks at the IRS. There are folks in state government and state law enforcement. This can even be shared with foreign governments if the U.S. chooses to share it with them. And one of the concerns in NFIB pushed for was, hey, this is oftentimes private information. This information is going to be potentially hacked. This information is going to be um, uh, leaked. Uh, we need to make sure that we are protecting this, A, for the, the privacy of the business owner to make sure no one wants their license leaked for identity theft. And B, this is often um, confidential information that you shouldn't necessarily have to provide. So. Shouldn't, if, you, if law enforcement really needs it, shouldn't law enforcement have to get a subpoena to see it? Unfortunately, we couldn't get that, so all law enforcement will have to do is write down a reason, they can go and access it. They don't have to get clearance from anyone, they just have to record a reason, and any of these um, actors can access this information on a whim, which is really concerning from kind of a, a big brother um, spying perspective. You know, why should business owners have to basically have their own Facebook that law enforcement can can view whenever they'd like. So are folks, um, are, are you aware, Jeff, are small businesses aware of this? And, you know, are they advocating? Obviously, that's your job. But um, what's the what's the awareness factor of this um, this situation? That that's the biggest concern. When, when we ask our members and our small businesses, the, the majority, meaning well over 50%, I've never heard of this. Um, I think what we're going to end up seeing is um, hopefully accountants make people aware, although we have heard some accountants because the definitions are vague, refuse to handle compliance. Some are doing it because their business is right and they might make money off of this. Others aren't because that substantial control definition is so vague. They're worried if they mess it up, they might get sued. Um, I think FinCEN is trying to inform people, but they don't think about where a company's incorporated. It's incorporated at the state level, right? You're not incorporated. So FinCEN doesn't know the addresses, all the people even contact to get them to file. And the most recent update we heard uh, last month, I think it's about five to six million businesses have already registered. That's up 32 million that need to register by the end of the year. So what, that's one of the, that'll be the really interesting thing. And we're, we're hoping that FinCEN or Congress might give businesses another year to even learn about this so that, you know, you don't have millions of unintended, unintended felons running around because they forgot to fill out a piece of paper that they never heard of. But um, the awareness thing is a real issue right now. 
So, Jeff, let's look at uh, how do you how does your organization, NFIB, how do you rank uh, business in West Virginia uh, or the ease of doing business for independent businesses in West Virginia? Do you have uh, any opinion on that? Yeah, we don't we don't have a, a particular ranking for West Virginia, but um, there's a lot worse places to be than West Virginia. We have some good numbers in West Virginia. Um, the, often the states we have the, the biggest issues tend to be your, your California, New York types. Um, but um, in terms of the local conditions, we don't, I don't, we don't have too many issues there right now. What uh, example um, legislation would you, would you pro- propose in a, in a state? What, what are the things that you've done in the, in the last couple of years that, you, that have worked or that have been good, good for NFIB? Sure. So full disclosure, I'm the federal guy. I'm not working. Gotcha. Um, the state house. We actually have a, we have we have someone who, who uh, his name is Gil works over in the state house. He uh, handles our full um, state portfolio. So I can't speak too much to. Uh, if you ever have Gil on, he's a great guy. He can speak uh, extensively to what we've worked on over in the state house, but I can't, unfortunately, speak too much to that right now. Yeah. On the federal level, Jeff, this is obviously political season. This is a time to apply pressure on certain issues. And I assume NFIB is, is very active in the political process just now, at least the lobbying, the influential process. Are you concentrating on the tax rates or the transparency issues or both? So those are our top two issues this year, the tax rates for next year because, uh, and the um, corporate transparency, the beneficial ownership reporting. Uh, but there's a whole host of other federal issues where we're active on. The tax one's probably the top one is it's gonna mean the most to small business owners' bottom lines. Uh, the transparency one, because it's pretty scary if you're, if you're not in compliance, um, you know, there's jail time penalties, that's a pretty big deal. but. Otherwise, there's a whole host of issues. As you, as you can imagine, a lot of them are regulatory. Um, each administration has a, a, a lot of um, issues, a whole host of regulations that can be problematic for small businesses. Department of Labor has, has issued a, a whole bunch from increasing overtime thresholds to restricting use of independent contractors that have been problematic. Um, a couple other issues we're working on are uh, credit card swipe fees. So if you're a small business, um, one of the things we've heard from those who take credit cards is one of their top five concerns uh, happen to be swipe fees, um, which a lot of people wouldn't expect. But um, at a time when uh, we are moving to people paying with credit cards more and more and more and less people paying with cash, and swipe fees continue to increase year over year, small businesses are really getting hammered by that. Um, and there's uh, fundamentally... There's some fundamentally um, anti-competitive actions that credit card companies and banks have taken to keep swipe fees artificially high that have really hammered small businesses, right? They can't call up Visa and negotiate on it. Here's the rate, take it or leave it. And they also set the rate that um, small business owners pay the big banks, which is really problematic too, right? So you have um, these entities more or less, you know, using cartel style pricing that small business owners are just stuck with to the point if it's now one of the top five expenses and top five issues, it's really a problematic system. So that's something we've been very active on in Washington as well. Jeff, I want to thank you for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Um, we have to take a break. So you are listening to TV 10 and WRNR. Um, we will see you after the break. <laughs> 